Hello everybody, I'm Faleg and I wanted to make a video talking about Phoenix Point cause the game's coming out in a month so hey, why not uh, be prepared for when it's down and have strategy, tactics and all the know-how ready to face down the Pandoran threat and make a stew of the crab people, right? So, uh, in this video I'm going to be giving you a quick overview of how the base game works for a simple reason, the game is still technically in Alpha in Backers Build 5. So, uh, the uh, gear may still be changed in the final version, the uh, base building is gonna be completely different probably, the diplomacy system is gonna be in place, there is going to be uh, changes to the geoscape, there is going to be changes to soldier classes and uh, how strong each abilities are, so there is simply no point talking about uh, details. But uh, in this video I'm going to be uh, explaining, probably in a couple of parts, uh, the basic details of uh, how the game works and how to be absolutely freaking amazing at it. So, we have started by setting up a mission, it's just a random exploration, with the first level crew, it's the weakest the soldiers will get. And uh, I'm going to be explaining following things. Uh, first, what classes do and what they're good at, what they're bad at. Second, uh, how to move efficiently, how to uh, protect yourself from enemy fire and set up a nice skills. And uh, see how to eliminate enemies nice and tight. Just screw them up with a chainsaw. So, first and foremost, let's talk about classes. Uh, this guy here is a heavy, with, uh, he starts with a cannon and a jetpack. Jetpack is actually <laughs> your main tool you're going to be using for this guy. Because... Uh, it allows you to uh, get wherever the hell you want on the battlefield and that's great because the cannon he's wielding is an absolutely amazing weapon and uh, it's only effective up close. I mean yeah it's effective at far distant range if it hits something it's probably gonna kill it but uh, yeah it's uh, gonna have difficulties hitting the inside of a barn while standing in the barn. So, you want to be as close to the enemy as possible. So, for the heavy, you want to use the jetpack to position yourself so that you can make a short stroll in the direct vicinity to the enemy in an open field and shoot them. He's wearing heavy armor so he can take a punch or two. And he's gonna be fine. What you have to be careful for with this class if you're using the cannon is the uh, grenades. The enemy grenades will destroy that weapon really fast and it's freaking expensive to rebuild. So just be careful. Uh, in this class you don't have to aim at any particular body part of the enemy, just aim wherever, push space, shoot, and the enemy is gonna probably die unless it's something big uh, like uh, a Hydra or whatever the thing was called, just you know, the creepy crawly from under the sea. That's big and looks like a Hydra disc, that's the one. So yeah, next on, uh, basics of snipers. Snipers are great, but not very mobile, so it's a little bit of a paradox with them, at the least until you double class them. I'm gonna be talking about it in a different video probably, because it's more speculative thing since it's an alpha. Uh, with those guys, you want to be... Uh, I'm going to shut the music quieter later. And with this guy, you want to put yourselves in a nice open uh, field of fire to the enemy limbs. This guy is not there to kill enemies, he's there to make sure that enemies don't kill you. So what you're doing, you're shooting off the enemy's grenade launchers, you're shooting at their legs, you're causing bleedings uh, so they can just die out. And uh, if you disarm enemies with a sniper, they are going to be absolutely bloody easy to kill. And then you can use your assault to get in position, right? And next on we have assaults, those guys run with shotguns, those guys run with assault rifles and they're throwing grenades. They're your main killers in the party. And uh, what you're doing with them is that you're using, uh, you're getting return fire ability as soon as you can, you're getting the dash fire power as soon as you can, you get mobility, you get willpower and you move all over the field and eliminate enemies that are weakened by the snipers and the heavies. So in beta build 5, I'd say that the perfect team composition you can have is two heavies with cannons that are double class into assault so they can also use the dash and return fire to get in the enemy's face and eliminate them one at a time, just chop them up with an axe, like turn enemy dead, turn enemy dead. And you can use it with those two guys, if you mix them with an assault you can give them dash and return fire and they can uh, get the mobility and willpower improved, uh, I'm gonna like, maybe show you, they can get their willpower and speed improved 
so they can get close to the enemy fast after using the jetpack because that gun is heavy and shoot and fire and kill them. So yeah, that's basically it. With the, but on level 1 you have a jetpack, you have a cannon, so that's what we'll be working with. For snipers, uh, I also like to mix those guys with assaults because I like to mix everything with assaults. And increase willpower, increase speed, get them in higher ground so they can uh, snipe down enemy limbs and cut them down to pieces. So you can uh, generally disarm them, you can cripple them so they're slow and just finish them off with your assaults and heavies. And uh, last but not least, those are the dash and return fire skills that you want for the three. They're the absolute must for any class I found. And uh, just run around and kill, that's it. Okay, let's get into the game and uh, see how it looks in practice, shall we? So yeah, here we are. As, as I said, the builds I discussed is like super brief because it can all be uh, different when the game launches and be completely not uh, on point anymore. But I will of course make detailed build and tactics videos when the game is out. This is uh, a preparation video. So here we are on the map, we are in the corner. And we don't know where enemies are. This is like the most basic type of mission. It's uh, you just have to protect your crates and kill all enemies. That's it. Enemies are gonna try to run around kill crates. When they see you, they're gonna switch to see to seeing you. Uh, those things here are super important. If you walk into one of those blue fields, you're going to get three willpower for every of your soldiers, which is great, even if you didn't use any willpower yet, uh, because uh, then. You can simply yeah, top it up. If I have 6 willpower right now, I'd walk into that and I'd have 9 out of 6. And willpower is important to use active skills, which we don't have all that many right now, so they are not important. But they also uh, give you... Siren! That's, the, that's how the thing was called. But they also give you resistance to psionic attacks uh, like Siren, Skull and all that. Uh, which I'm going to be covering later. What you want to know is willpower is important to use and also keep it high, you have to balance it out. Anyway, we have no idea where, enemy of our enemies, uh, where any of our enemies are right now. And uh, let's talk about Ready. basic movements. So if you played the games like XCOM and XCOM 2, then you are probably used to the fact that cover is everything and uh, catchphrases like that, like low cover is no cover, high cover is everything and all that, and uh, you will be wanted, uh, wanting to and you will I'm be here. tempted to move your enemies from cover to cover. So that's a mistake in this game. Because uh, what you want to do is to cut line of sight, make sure the enemy has to come close to even see you, so you can eliminate them efficiently, and if you are behind cover, you are still liable to get uh, to take some hits, and it's going to damage your limbs. And uh, the cover is very fragile, cover gets destroyed very easily, so you can be in full safe cover at the end of your turn, and completely naked and surrounded by enemies in the start of the next one. And uh, for example, if you're using a two-handed weapon like a rifle, then you are going to suffer greatly if your limbs get destroyed um, because you won't be able to use your gun, that's it. And you will have to go to your support weapon if you have any. And uh, yeah, that's gonna suck, right? And even worse, somebody throws a grenade at you and they destroy your freaking cannon and that thing takes almost like a 200, 200 billion gazillion years to rebuild. So you want to just be careful. Okay, so we have we are not relying on cover. I'm not gonna explain what the blue thing is. It's like two shots, one shot, like no shots. That's a very basic thing. If you're in the blue, you can shoot after moving. If you're in the yellow, you can't shoot after moving. So you want to always take it, uh, not exactly slow, but you don't want to really dash into positions unless you know where you're going, as you can see. There you go, enemy is spotted and we can see where they are. It's a crabman with melee and grenade. So yeah, those guys are fragile but hella dangerous. There is different there are different types of enemies and I'm going to be making separate videos about them. But what you need to know for the purpose of this video is that this guy is gonna uh, use his left hand to lob a grenade at you. That's very dangerous because it's going to destroy your cover, it's going to damage your limbs, it's gonna destroy your weapons, it's going to seduce your dad and it's going to run away to Hawaii with him. So you want to be sure that they don't get to use the grenades at you. And the uh, pinsters are relatively not dangerous unless they get close, because they attack multiple times with them, and it hurts. So yeah, right now, as you can see, I don't particularly care about cover, I'm standing in the open. I want to have clear lines of sight, 
because I have no enemies close and I don't care. And you don't have to either because we have pretty certain, uh, well, okay, we have a certain degree of uh, potential, maybe certainty that there is no enemies here. And as for the jetpack, the thing about it, this guy is that you don't have to really care where you put him. Just put him wherever you can jetpack to any, any old place next turn. So yeah, after the enemy turn I will be making sure that uh, the enemies uh, can't hurt me rather than uh, well, no, like killing them. Because you don't actually have to kill enemies, you just have to make sure that they don't want to stay in the fight. Enemies have morale and you want to use it. So if you kill an enemy, then it's going to hurt their morale, that's what I'm talking about. You really see. All the cover around here is just destroyed. It's completely unreliable. Don't trust cover. The uh, all the humans building their bases and cities and uh, havens are using a special metal called the uh, fragilium when building cover pieces. So just want to be careful with them. Those guys are super dangerous. They're face huggers. Okay, right now we have one guy, and see this is the problem. You might want to be tempted to take this shot right now because it's a very good kill and it's going to take off the enemy grenade arm and make him uh, weak. But you're gonna shoot your friend in the back. There is friendly fire in this game. You Let's do go. not want to shoot your friend in the back because, you know, uh, it's painful. And uh, as you can see, you are now in the clear. We can just take an aim. We can shoot the guy in the head and probably kill him. And it would be, of course, a good idea to do that, but most enemies you can't kill with one shot. This is just first mission in the game, so you want to damage their limbs. You can try to damage the weapon, but as you see, it has a lot of hit points before it gets destroyed. But if you damage the limb that is uh, right holding the weapon, the weapon's gonna fall to the ground and enemy can't use it. Which is a superior case. Right now, this is a very weak version of Arthur and doesn't have a carapace or anything. So the shot will probably kill it. It's, there you go. But even if it wouldn't kill the guy, he would shoot off his arm, the arm would be disabled, grenade would be unusable, and the guy would be no longer capable of firing its projectiles, which is what we want. Now we have those two guys here. I'm going to show you how to use the line of sight to protect yourself from grenades. Technically, those guys can just lob grenades over cover, damage it, destroy it, and be very damaging to your health. But you can A, move yourself into position. I made a mistake. You should always change your weapon before mo moving to a position where you want to change it, but yeah. On it. You can change position, get a little closer. Got I it. think we should be able to pull it off. Again, cover is not important. It's only It only matters as long as it uh, cuts the line of sight. And uh, we can knock the grenade. It doesn't give us a certainty that it will destroy the limb, but it's very likely. There you go. This equipment destroyed grenade. Equipment destroyed pincer. This guy now is uh, bleeding out. He loses 30 hit points per turn. His head is damaged. His both limbs are crippled. He will run out of the map. That's it. This enemy is done. You don't have to worry about him at all. You broke his weapons and uh, he has no reason to stay yes. in the fight. So he won't. There you go. You won against this guy. The other way is to uh, stay too far from the enemy reach to throw a grenade at you. This guy is gonna glob like blub 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 and we're gonna be just too far for him to throw a grenade at us and next turn we are gonna go out of uh, the, uh, from around the corner and shoot his uh, grenade hand off. We can't do anything with the guy so we're just gonna let it be. Now thing we want to do is uh, usually get the, the crates with additional ammunition and weapons so you want to get to uh, strategic points as early as we can but if we do it right now we get grenaded so you can't do this but you can still chill and no enemies are going to be able to get to us except for the face hugger face hugger is uh, an asshole so we can try to set up an overwatch i'm gonna set up an overwatch with a cannon it's not gonna hit because the cannon's absolute crap but uh, you can set up the range at which the cannon will fire, as you see. Uh, why wouldn't I just want to take 
the furthest range possible. Well, accuracy falls drastically. I'm using an extremely inaccurate weapon, so I will just set up a like this long distance of, and uh, the heavy is only going to fire his cannon when enemy gets to here. So the face hugger is now going to try to get, get right around this distance so we can jump on our face and take control of our heavy. But the heavy is gonna shoot his dead, shoot him dead. And I'm going to also secure the situation up with the assault in case the fragger chooses a different route. And in the meantime, enemies are lining themselves up to be killed as predicted. Now, they've now spotted you and me and are trying to run away, which is okay. Because we're scary. Okay, Fragger is trying to be as smart as, which is great. He's not trying to kill us. We won't have to worry. Okay, so as you can see, the enemy have predicted we are going to get uh, try to go over here and crap him, so he tries to hide behind cover. He only then saw our second soldier that is being put in a position to take them into a nomen omen pincers. So we want to get as close to the enemy as possible. And in this case, uh, the guy is gonna most likely die no matter what we do, but uh, if it's a tougher enemy, you want to select his most dangerous limb, not the weapon, and shoot it off. So in this case it would be the grenade launcher uh, or the pincer, really, because uh, he's most likely gonna use either one of them if we let him. But since we can just kill him, let's just kill him. And yeah, I was going to turn the sound down. Well, shit, I didn't. Okay, uh, now before you move you can see lines coming out from the ground towards enemies. You can use it to orientate yourself uh, as to where your enemies are or just get the ball rolling by uh, going further away with the screen. And in this case we can most likely kill him, so let's just do it. We missed, because these guys are recruit from XCOM. Okay, we can go and try to approach those guys directly. But the Mindfragger over here is just waiting for that. We're gonna get over here to try to get overwatch fire on them. Mindfragger's gonna come, jump, take control of our unit, those guys will come, use grenades. So you must always think tactically and don't be a dummy. We are going to use our jetpack to jetpack ourselves away. But we want to be uh, close enough to shoot but far enough so the enemy isn't tempted to walk over and drop a grenade in our face because that can damage our limb, destroy our weapon and generally be a bad time. Again, cover not important, especially when you were fighting against enemies that use grenades instead of actual weapons. And again, your grenades are cheap, they're a plentiful resource. You want to use it to cripple your enemies? Use it. Grenade destroyed, we don't have to worry about this guy, no more. And you can just go to the inventory and select another thing. You don't want to be going to the inventory uh, every single time you want something willy nilly. You want to uh, go to the inventory when you actually intend to use it, because it costs you action points. And again, I'm gonna try to keep the mind fragger away with overwatchers. This guy is not important anymore, he's gonna run away. You can kill him to lower other enemies' morale and cause, and cause them to panic. Because the more enemies you kill, especially using explosives, it's going to cause uh, morale damage. And uh, it's going to simply uh, make them impossible to move. If they can't move, they can't shoot you. And here you can see an overwatch set up by an enemy over here. We don't even see him, but we know there is an overwatch. The game tells you. It might not do that anymore in the final release. And anyway, as you see, by keeping yourself in uh, correct distance, the enemy is going to come to you and they won't be able to actually do anything to you. This, the game is right now on the highest possible difficulty level, mind you. And instead of standing at the corner, as you would in XCOM, to take overwatch pot shots, you want to cut line of sight completely so the enemies uh, simply come over to reveal you. Because they remember you are there. And if you stand at the corner, then this guy's gonna take two steps, throw a grenade at you, and you're screwed. So you just don't wanna do it. 
and if you are controlling the territory feel free to move forward cover gives you some protection that's why i'm using it right now but not enough to worry about it and yeah this guy is eliminated we can uh, if you're wondering why I'm jetpacking all over the place, I'm using my heavy instead of attacking with him because he will probably not hit anything. He doesn't have any skills, he's never one. But I'm using him as a blunt instrument to flash enemies out into my assaults. This guy is running around, he's spotting enemies and he's uh, keeping them on the move and away from me so I can get them done. Now, this guy, Triton, is gonna be a bit of a challenge because uh, he has a gun that he's likely going to shoot. Those guys usually shoot you as soon as they see you, unlike the crab people that try to get close to do it unless they have heavy machine guns. So what you want to do is, if you don't have anywhere else to go, stand by the cover, it's gonna eat at least a couple of the ammunition. Or you can do even better, stand in a way to make sure that the cover hides you from the enemy. So yes, you are technically not in cover right now on, on, as this heavy. But when the Triton shoots us, the cover is going to take all of the fire because the bullets are following a ballistic line and you don't have to worry about static indications of your interface. So despite technically standing in the open, this heavy is now much more protected than as if he would be standing on any of the two fields that actually provide him with heavy cover. Open and fire. again, we, ha we have the ability to shoot his gun, trying to make it impossible for him to shoot us. But what we want to shoot is his arm. There you go, disable the arm, he can no longer fire his gun. And he get into a camouflage, because that's what they do. I'm gonna be talking about enemies in a different video. And here again, we are in a situation where and when we are threatened by enemy grenades. Probably not, but maybe. So, liberal use of your own explosives is absolutely commendable. Equipment destroyed, grenade, we don't have to worry about him anymore. Uh, does he have a pincer? No, we destroyed both his limbs and his head, so this guy is now completely harmless, we can just leave him or kill him to remove enemy morale. And that's it. As you see, this guy escapes from the map. And that's uh, just as well as if he was dead. The only uh, benefit of actually killing enemies is the fact that every other foe is losing morale if a uh, guy gets killed, which you can you know, use to eventually rout them and just uh, massacre them. But it's only important in bigger fights with plenty of enemies. In a small scale situation like that, not so much. And again, we can't actually get to this guy. We could bash, but we are uh, we don't have willpower. So what do you do? We are perfectly protected. As you can see, all the enemies are grayed out, which means that you don't have line of sight on them. They, you are not in direct danger from any of them, and they're seen by other people. So instead of blindly rushing and taking a taking a shot that would very likely miss outside from the overwatch range, you can just recover just a minute, got to get calm. and keep him scared. And just the fact that this soldier is there is going to prevent enemies from trying to rush out and uh, seek uh, their, uh, I don't know, happiness or whatever all over the place. So you can get your assaults in line for a kill. As you can see, I'm running through that overwatch and he doesn't fire. Why? Well, that wall is cutting line of sight. He simply never saw my soldier, so he will not fire. You have to be careful of that for your own overwatches as well that you need a line of, line of sight to be effective. As for your snipers, those guys are great at overwatching. I'm going to make sure that Triton stays where he is. I covered. placed my own overwatch. Enemies, at least in Buckerfield uh, 5, ignore overwatch markers. Uh, so this guy may walk away, but he will likely stay where he is. And uh, that's it. He has very low accuracy with his gun. He can still hold him, mind you because we hit the wrong limb. See, we aimed at the limb holding a gun, but the bullet just flies in a straight line and we disabled his melee weapon, so he's still dangerous. That's just random chance. And the mind fragger is still there, so I'm gonna slowly whisk him out. We have another Triton out there. And that's interesting, but uh, not that much. I'm not, I don't even bother about cover, because why? 
the enemies are not gonna shoot unless it's uh, in at least somewhat semi beneficial. Oh. We got uh, damaged a little bit, but that's not true. The enemy cut through our overwatch. And Ready? yeah, if we uh, would uh, keep him pinned in with overwatch, he just stayed there. But I miscalculated and he didn't. But that's too bad for him. Thing about moving and shooting. Uh, you have action points that are getting used up. So if you just uh, run around On to get way. things done instead of uh, shooting an enemy that is right in your face, uh, you will lose an opportunity to shoot twice with some weapons. There you go. I threw I tossed a grenade without caring about that crate because we still get the full benefit of it if it survives. It can be damaged. Nobody cares. And now our only problem is that little fella over here. We don't want to jump right into his overwatch, but we can take a little bit of a stroll and use the jetpack. Or maybe not. There we go. That's what happens when you run through an overwatch. Now you know. I did that on purpose. Did anybody believe me? Great. So yeah, now it's just uh, us against that last remaining guy. He's in a great position against us, to be honest. He has fields of fire everywhere. And uh, all we got is a little teaspoon, so that's fine. Let's just form a terrier and take him into pincers, surround him from all sides and cause him to like not know what to do. He's gonna have to take a stand and whatever he does, he's gonna be in a bad position. There you go. Cover itself didn't give us anything. Uh, shotguns are just notoriously, notoriously weak. And this is the perfect damage to use your cannon. Perfect range, I meant, sorry. If you are shooting it from uh, anywhere further on than this, you're most likely not going to hit. And yeah, as you can see, cannons are very powerful. We can just get over here, eliminate. See That's it. You in the next slide. So, I hope you guys uh, find this video educational and useful and... Uh, now we've gone over the very basics of how to navigate your tactical map, the very basic of how to approach and engage the enemies in multiple contexts. There are more complicated and more comp uh, effective tactics you can use, but uh, using the things that I showed you in this video and the knowledge in from this video should uh, completely suffice for your initial beta uh, backer build 5 and probably even released game. Uh, missions until uh, level 3 or so when you get access to some abilities. As is, uh, anything that I told you is completely very basic, mind you. I'm going to be making uh, tutorials for more complex strategies and tactics, but uh, that I'm gonna do it when the game launches, when we know for sure how all of the uh, research trees and build trees and all that look like, right? So this was it and i hope you enjoyed it if you did let me know in the comments like the video follow me on facebook twitter tell me what uh, kind of uh, things about phoenix point you would like to see uh, what kind of tactics uh, would you like to talk about uh, and i'm also going to be making videos talking about specific enemies uh, with the hope that they will stay similar and when the game releases and yeah that's that see you guys next time i've been Falag.